Before we get started, let me just say um, I haven't shaven today. <laughs> and the reason why is just a little idiosyncrasy or a little fact is um, I like to go in and get an old fashioned shave and haircut. As you can see, my hair is getting pretty long. So <laughs> I go in every three weeks, like without fail, and I get the old fashioned razor shave and the uh, haircut. So I try to save up for that. So I want to, I didn't, I went to shave this morning. I hate to not be shaved, <laughs> but anyway, that's just a little side fact. So excuse my <laughs> appearance today. <laughs> Started in 1994 and everything was different. Everything was different. <laughs> and, um, you know, the, from when you walk into the dental practice, even the smell, you remember the way a dental practice smells. I don't think it smells the same way now, <laughs> but you know, now we try to keep our practice to where it smells nice. You know, we have a different candle that we burn for each season. We have our fall candle, our spring candle, our summer candle, our summer, summer's fig, by the way. Um, spring is gonna be really nice bergamot and citruses. Fall, we like to go in with a, a, a really nice cinnamon. As you come to Christmas, it's gonna be more pine. I mean, that's a difference right away. Also, the old charts that you used to see. You remember those, you'd oh, yeah. see all the charts. It took me a while to get rid of that one. Uh, the charts are all digital now, which is nice if you're looking for a particular uh, note for a patient. We used to have to go and dig through all the notes. Uh, the x-rays, of course, are different. Because digging for the notes, you'd have to take out all the old x-rays that used to look up like this and see, and now they're all digital. I think the majority of the changes have been going to digital. And again, I was very slow <clears throat> to drag my feet on that. Um, you know, it, it has its days where you feel like a slave to technology. Um, but overall, it's been really good. Um, the other changes that come to mind are some of the things that, you know, big technological changes like Invisalign, it's been huge. Um, veneers. Uh, gigantic change, uh, world-class bonding techniques, which basically means patients can have really nice aesthetic dentistry without taking a lot of tooth structure away. Things don't fall off, things are stronger. Material choices uh, used to go from things that, when I remember when I first did a crown, I'm like, did all that and it looks like this, doesn't look like a tooth. Now we can do crowns that look, look like teeth because materials are better. Implants, how could I forget that? So those are a few changes. Yes, we finally changed the decor. Um, and that was out of respect to Dr. Price. He built the office by hand and uh, he's still going strong. He's not practicing dentistry anymore, but he still visits all the time. And uh, last time he visited, he was surprised to see that the office had moved up into this decade. Uh, he had more of the 80s look and was very fond of that. And um, my patients started requesting more of a modern feel to the practice. And so, yes, we're, we're right there now. Patients love the color choices. They love the material choices and the lighting's a lot better. And that, that's been a big change. Patient care the most. I think that's an important thing. You know, what, from a patient point of view, what has changed that's actually made it better, more comfortable, more convenient, more predictable, and a better value? Uh, lots of things, you know. I know that when I first started, patients would say, gee, they remember a time when they would go to the dentist and they didn't have numbing. <laughs> I think that was a huge change. Uh, but from when I started, I know, can you believe that? People <laughs> go to the dentist and they're like, this is a lot better. I remember as a kid, they used to not numb me. A lot of people remember that. Um, but nowadays, gee, dentistry has moved in leaps and bounds um, as far as technology that has 
made the dental office a pretty good place to come. Um, you know, off the top of my head, one thing I could think of would be digital x-rays. That has changed the conversation, whereas it used to be like we would take x-rays and you wouldn't even share them with the patient. That was for the doctor and the doctor staff, and we knew the secret to read the x-rays. I tell my patients every day, hey, let's look at, let's take a tour of the mouth. Let's look at your x-rays together, and we will together diagnose the problem. And they look at me kind of like, that's strange. I'm like, no, I can teach you to read this x-ray in two seconds. <laughs> Blow it up on a big screen, and we can take a tour tooth by tooth. And together, you can start to understand your own mouth, as I like to say. We give you the owner's manual for your mouth. And so that communication with a patient has been extraordinary with the digital x-rays and just being able to follow a patient's care over the decades, I can quickly pull up an x-ray from 20 years ago and see the progress, in this case progress, that somebody's made over the next you know, 20 years um, or the decline. So that would go the same for digital photography. You know, when I started, we weren't taking photography. That's not something that you did in a dental office. That's something you did in a Hollywood cosmetic surgeon's office. But I can't practice without digital photography. It's probably the most important tool in the practice. Again, for patient communication of showing the patient what I see that they may not necessarily feel. In fact, if I get to something because somebody's feeling it, it's a little too late, as we've talked about a lot of times. So that is the challenge. If I'm looking in their mouth in this teeny little mirror in a dark hole, trying to diagnose things, as opposed to looking at a high resolution digital photography on a screen that's 20 inches wide at least, or bigger, and we're looking at it together, I'm seeing things that's like, wow, I didn't, I didn't know that was there, you know, when I'm looking in that tiny little mirror in the dark hole. <laughs> and we're looking at it together, and I'm seeing cracks, I'm seeing leakage, I'm seeing decay, more so than I'm picking up from radiographs. So the, together with the radiographs and the photography, that leads to better patient care. You find things earlier, you can communicate it to the patient and they can see it so they are motivated to do it earlier. So you end up with the theme that we talked about a lot. It's more predictable, more conservative, less costly. So that's a win for everyone. Um, the other thing I can think of would be implants. Absolutely. Before we used to go and you lose a tooth, what would you do? You did a bridge. The bridge fails, what do you do? Bigger a bigger bridge. <laughs> and the bigger bridge fails, you know what you do then? A partial. A partial. Wow, you're pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> you do a partial. What do you do when the partial fails? A denture. You do a denture. So you're stringing together the teeth. They're all holding hands. They're all in it together. But they all go down together. Nowadays with implants, we divide and conquer. So you lose a tooth, you leave those two innocent teeth alone on either side, you place an implant in the middle, you divide and conquer. Which means that when things fail, you're dealing with single tooth dentistry, which is less complicated, more predictable, more comfortable. People like to floss, the majority of my patients do. Looks more natural, easier to clean, uh, implants don't have nerves, so they feel like, hey, doc, that's the strongest tooth in my mouth. I feel like I can chew nails with it. I tell them, don't do that, but it's good you feel that way. Uh, that's been huge. So I tell patients, if you know what the goal is for a patient, is to get them to 100 with all their teeth, that with the caveat of we may need some titanium supplementation, and that... Um, they laugh at that. They get it, you know. Oh yeah, my hip's titanium. Mm -hmm. so. 
Is it going to go off at the airport? No, you're going to be fine. <laughs> they calibrate it for titanium. <laughs> so that has been a game changer. It definitely enables patients to get to 100 with all their teeth with a little titanium supplementation. You know, my adults before, I would see things that they would want fixed. And I would be thinking in my head, oh, they need braces. They need braces, but I'm not going to mention it because, you know, they would think about putting brackets and wires on their teeth and how silly they would look and the inconvenience of that. And I would just start to mention it and they would say, no, I'm not doing braces. Conversation over. So what would happen? They would want the nice smile. And so I would do it. But in order to do instant orthodontics with porcelain or with crowns, you have to take away a lot of tooth structure. And it is not in my nature to do something that aggressive. So there's a consequence to that. So when Invisalign came around, I would tell them if we could put a handle on the tooth and move it, and they would say, I'm not doing braces, <laughs> say, but. But what if we could do it and nobody would know you're in braces? What if I saw you at the grocery store and you had this device on and we, I couldn't even tell? That is Invisalign. So it's very cosmetic. Adults can wear it and nobody knows it. You can talk with it in. It definitely moves the teeth in a way that braces do and better. It can happen faster than braces. And it is something that has tons of bonuses. The only disadvantage is that you can take them out. So I'm really careful to talk to patients about, you know, you can take them out, but don't just take them out to eat and that's it. And this has enabled us to give patients the smile they always wanted. And in the end, if you move the teeth and the teeth are still discolored and teeth have chips, then you can do the veneers and really amp things up and put the icing on the cake. And that's what we do. And that's why I started doing Invisalign. So I could get the teeth in the right position and then make them look good with veneers. And oftentimes, and I tell patients, I say, you know, after we move these teeth, you may not even want to do the veneers. And so sometimes, a lot of times, we just move the teeth and whiten them. And patients are like, do I have to do the veneers? I'm like, of course not. <laughs> and that's, you know, we do that all the time. That's, that's a really nice piece of technology that has improved patient care. It has improved their quality of life. It's improved dentistry tremendously. So I think those are probably the biggest ones. If I include one more, I would have to include digital scanning. You know, patients all the time are impressed that we keep up with technology. They like that. They have pride in their dentist. Oh, you have this, doctor. That's, you're keeping up with the times. I'm like, yes, but I don't do it for the novelty. I don't do it for the sizzle. I do it because it's going to improve your life. So I will not jump on to a new technology just because my patients are, have seen it on the morning news. I have to test it. I have to research it. I have to see if it's going, going to improve their life. And again, I was kind of slow to digital scanning. Uh, but now I can tell you that has been helpful. I mean, who wants the impression material in their mouth? You know, who wants that hassle? Some people that are really bad gaggers. Um, digital scanning has enabled us to go through and scan the teeth as opposed to taking an analog impression. And again, the patient communication is amazing. We can look at the same way we can look at the photography or of the radiographs. We can look at your teeth in a three-dimensional image. And I can send that to Costa Rica to Invisalign that I can share it with an expert over there in a matter of seconds and upload that file. And we can collaborate and get the best treatment plan that you can possibly get. Before it used to be like we would treatment plan in our little hole in Brandon, independent of the rest of the world. Now, if I want to send it to Madrid, 
to a good friend there and say, hey, I have a question about this. What do you think? Upload the digital scan. He has your mouth three-dimensionally in a matter of seconds, just like the first time you sent an email. <laughs> I'm still amazed by that technology, <laughs> but I'm old school. I'm an old school guy that is keeping up with the times, so. though, for my patients. <laughs> And my patients appreciate all these things, um, but they've had to push me and, and so have my staff. Um, but I'm, I'm glad to say it has made dentistry better. We're having a lot of fun with it. And it's, I tell my staff, if there's one thing you can count on, it's change. And uh, so now we invite change. <laughs>